Hey ladies and gents, welcome back. This is going to be part one to what if Naruto was Scorpion. So this isn't going to be what if he was like the reincarnation of Scorpion or he just gets his powers, no. Naruto in this is literally just going to be Scorpion. He's going to be born in the nether realm and then be reborn or like he's going to basically be born to Minato and Kushina after he was basically already alive inside of the nether realm. So with that being said, without further ado, Let's get started. So, when Naruto is born, he obviously isn't some normal looking child. He has, like, really, like, completely white, pale, like, his eyes are just completely, seemingly lifeless. And everybody, basically, that witnesses Naruto at a young age, or that basically sees him for the first time, is like, is he some kind of, like, zombie? Is he dead? And they're trying to figure out what exactly what is going on with him, which they wouldn't be 100% wrong in assuming that he's dead. It's just, it's kind of a weird thing, I guess you could say. So all of the events that basically lead up to Minato and Kushina's deaths wouldn't change because I don't see how a baby Naruto, even if he is Scorpion, would be able to change anything like that. So nothing like that would really change Minato and Kushina, Minato, Minato, I cannot talk. Minato and Kushina would still both end up dying, and Naruto would grow up, grow up, and he would still be resented and hated by the village. Except, as most people who have played Mortal Kombat or know of like the lore behind Scorpion know that he doesn't exactly, he doesn't exactly take shit. He, he doesn't take shit. He's just he, he is really, really short temper. And anybody who tries to basically do anything to him, torment him, taunt him, they are either going to die or be injured. And this also applies to Naruto as well. Anytime a villager or even somebody like some kind of like Chunin or Jonin, when Naruto is at like the age of six or seven, he would he would probably be enough to take down the lower ranking Jonin and obviously almost any Chunin basically. So anybody who tries to mess with him, whether it be a villager, other kids, literally anything like that, they would find out very quickly that they shouldn't be messing with Naruto, just be, just because he he doesn't take their shit. He's He would literally, like, kill them if they did it more than once kind of a thing. Like, somebody did it more than once, and they just disappeared, and nobody really knows where they went. But everybody secretly thinks that, yeah, Naruto just kind of killed him because he decided that they were going to fuck with him more than once. So, Naruto basically doesn't have the village hating, or they still hate him, obviously, but they don't really do anything to him because they're afraid of him and afraid that if they do anything, he would literally kill them. He grows up and he doesn't really go around pranking people much. He has, like, insanely good grades just because, like, basically he can pretty much remember anything he reads kind of a thing. Like, I'm pretty sure Scorpion has, like, um, uh, what have we got? Like, like, he has, like, photographic memory, if I remember correctly. I don't think that's only Sub-Zero that has that. So, he has insanely good grades, and he's really smart. And most of the time, people, like, l are looking at him. They don't really think that he's actually, like, a kid. They just think he's, like, oh, whatever. He's kind of short and small, but he's not really a kid. He doesn't act like one. He doesn't really talk to anybody like that. He's not addicted to ramen. He is... He's just kind of, like, he doesn't do anything, really. He's kind of edgy, I guess you could say. So, as Naruto is growing up, he obviously knows of all of his abilities due to him literally being Scorpion. He's not the reincarnation of Scorpion. He has all of Scorpion's memories and different things like that. And so Scorpion was kind of, like, reborn into this world, I guess you could say. So he knows of all of his abilities. And just for the sake of the video... <laughs> I'm just gonna say that he isn't going to become, like, some kind of, like, rogue... Actually, he legit might just become, like, some kind of rogue ninja, and, like, he... But even if he was a rogue ninja, he wouldn't really do anything all too much. Like, he wouldn't do anything. That's all there really is to it. He wouldn't do anything unless somebody decided they were gonna fuck with him, so it wouldn't really be that interesting if I did something like that. So we're just gonna say he still... He decides that he's going to become a ninja, I guess you could say. So, he has absurdly good grades and different things like that, but due to his, I guess you could say, edgelord kind of thing going on, and due to being a son of Minato and Shina, they do still assign him to Kakashi, just because Kakashi was 
close to Minato and Kushina, and obvious, and that would be a good thing, I guess you could say, for Naruto. So Sasuke would be placed on the team as well as Hinata. So I'm just doing that just because I'm pretty. I don't think Hinata was quite as smart as Sakura was, just to like try to balance up the team a little bit. I know Hinata probably got like much better grades and stuff like like that Naruto at least did in the original, but I'm just gonna say that she's placed on the team instead just to give it a little bit of a change up in ways of how things are going to end up going. So with that, they assign Team 7 to Kakashi, and they go and meet him. He's late, obviously. There is no prank that has been set up for him, and Kakashi shows up to basically take in the first impressions, I guess you could say. So as he's looking around the classroom, basically taking in, taking in stock of what exactly these people are going to be like, he makes eye contact with everybody there, except for Naruto, because Naruto doesn't really care. He looks up for a brief moment when he walks in, and then he kind of just looks back down, not really giving a shit about anything that's going on here. Kakashi introduces himself, and he asks them to do the same. Sox um, Sasuke, is it Sa Sahu? I don't know what I'm trying to say. Sasuke's would still be the same, he still wants to kill Itachi and do all those kinds of things. Hinata is still insanely awkward, and every time she says something, she would basically be looking at people around her, because she's still really awkward. She doesn't have a crush on Naruto, because Naruto's personality isn't exactly her type. Like, he's like an edgelord, never talks to anybody, and he's not like the heroic kind of person that I guess you could say he was in the original, so Hinata wouldn't actually have a crush on him. She would probably be afraid of him, if anything. So, with that, he, or she is done with her thing, and they ask Naruto. Naruto looks up at Kakashi now, basically for the second time. He has a little bit more interest in pretty much the person now, but he decides that he is actually going to tell him a little bit about what he plans on doing in the future. And what he says is that he doesn't exactly have many goals, as you guys would put it. He just doesn't really want to do anything. Unless somebody fucks with him, he's not probably he's going to really not do anything to them in payment, I guess you could say. He basically just tells them that if somebody fucks with him, he's going to kill them. Otherwise, he doesn't really care about that person. And Kakashi is like, oh, okay, interesting. That's kind of weird, but sure, why not? <laughs> so... Kagashi would basically tell them to meet him in the morning at this field, and they do so. Kakashi is late, and nobody eats breakfast. So, with that, <laughs> the actual part, or the actual bell test actually ends up starting. So, with the bell test starting, uh, after it obviously was explained what it was, everybody would hide except Naruto. Naruto doesn't give enough of a shit about this to actually decide to hide, and he just decides that he wants to end this quickly so he can go back to his house and take a nap. So, with that, he just slowly walks towards Kakashi, who is a little bit intimidated by Naruto because he looks scary as fuck, and then he gains a little bit of composure over himself and he begins the fight with Naruto. He would begin running at Naruto before a little pool of some weird like mag or um some <laughs> some weird substance that was really hot and orange appeared on the ground that Kakashi obviously realized was magma or like liquid rock I guess you could say and Naruto literally fell into it and Kakashi's like did he just melt or what exactly just happened before Kakashi felt a little bit of heat behind him and he turned around to see Naruto climbing out of the ground right next to him. And he jumps now, as Naruto was literally about to just casually snag the bells with absolutely no difficulty whatsoever. And Kakashi's like, what is that? Before Naruto looks up, extending his, basically, hand towards him, opening it, opening up his hand, and yelling, GET OVER HERE! As a kunai with a massive chain on it basically shot out of Naruto's hand. It actually successfully managed to attach itself to Kakashi before Naruto started pulling Kakashi towards him. Then Naruto ran forward at Kakashi now, 
summoning a sword made out of fire in his right hand, still having the chain in his left, and he went for a finishing blow on Kakashi. Kakashi took out his Sharingan and actually managed to dodge the strike, and then he pulled the kunai off of, I'm going to say it was attached to his left arm. So he managed to do that, pulling off the kunai, and he's now holding his left shoulder, and he's trying to take stock of how easily Naruto just almost managed to take him down. And he's wondering exactly how he's going to be able to defeat this kid, and obviously Sasuke would be a little bit concerned about the fact that Kakashi has a Sharingan, but he would put this together and realize that Kakashi's the copy ninja. So, with that, Naruto would once again just casually start walking towards Kakashi, and he would once again fall into the ground. Kakashi would not actually know where Naruto popped up, and he'd just kind of be gone. <laughs> Sasuke would now jump out, realizing that he was it was basically his turn to fight if he didn't want Naruto to basically win for him. So he jumps out now and he tries to get the bells like he did before. Kakashi already has his Sharingan out, as well as already putting away his book, so he has absolutely no difficulty putting Sasuke back in his place, but he is slightly impressed by his basically taijutsu skills. As Sasuke is basically on like about to get defeated, Naruto would jump in now, blocking one of the punches from Kakashi, and he would jump in now to basically start fighting him in place of Sasuke. Sasuke would wonder exactly why Naruto actually like helped him out in the first place, because he's not really been known to help anybody. He kind of just like casually walks by like people beating little children and different things like that, so he's wondering why exactly Naruto helped him. He would ask this later, obviously, but for now, he thought he would just let it go. So, with Naruto fighting Kakashi once again, he summons, or conjures, whatever you want to call it, two flame swords, and he begins fighting with Kakashi. Kakashi is actually managing to keep up with Naruto's speed and strength that he has, and he's actually doing relatively well against him. Usually, these what-ifs go that Naruto is doing relatively well against whoever his opponent is, but it's now, now it's they're doing relatively well against just this Naruto. So with that, Naruto would continue on with his battle, Kakashi would jump back, Naruto would continue to basically throw a, or not throw, but shoot his um, chain at him, and he would pull him back. Naruto would literally just impale Kakashi through the shoulder, and really severely damage him with his flame sword, and Kakashi would basically surrender to Naruto after their fight continued for a decent amount of time. Kakashi would be wondering just exactly how powerful Naruto actually was, and he would actually ask Naruto how much he was holding back, because he could sense that Naruto wasn't really trying against him. And Naruto now looks at him, and he basically just tells him, I was using 50%. And he begins to walk away now. And Kakashi's just left in awe at that statement. He doesn't actually think that Naruto is exaggerating that, because he knows of Naruto's basically character as and who he is as a person. And he'd be wondering exactly why Naruto was holding back and why he was so powerful in the first place. And then he looks back, or Naruto looks back, and he just says, well, I guess it would be that if you're just counting physical ability, I guess you could say. And he basically explains to him that he has probably hun dozens, if not hundreds, of different ab abilities that he could have been using that could have pretty much one-shot Kakashi from the instant they started the battle. Kakashi would be in awe at this statement, and he would be wondering exactly why Naruto didn't just use one of those abilities. And Naruto would basically just tell him, he'd be like, That'd be overkill for this world. Kakashi would be taking the this world comment, but he'd just kind of forget about it for the time being, not really wanting to question Naruto because he just got, like, his, he just got handed to just by this little kid. Like, he was easily defeated, and he wasn't even using his full power. Like, not even anywhere close to his full power. So, with that, he goes, or Naruto goes back, and he eats his ramen. I know I said at the beginning that Naruto doesn't isn't addicted to ramen, but that doesn't mean he doesn't like it. So <laughs> he goes and he eats his ramen. So with that, he goes and he gets assigned some D-rank missions, and he obviously does them with absolute no difficulty whatsoever. 
So they do all their D-rank missions before they go and they get a higher ranking mission from Hiruzen at once everybody gets insanely bored of the missions that they're currently doing. Hiruzen doesn't really have a reason not to give them a higher ranking mission due to having Naruto basically as well as Kakashi on the team because he knows that Naruto is just so ungodly overpowered at least for the age that he's at at this point. So he decides that he's going to allow them to do this higher ranking mission and this is where bridge builder Tazuna walks in. There is no comment on the fact that these are little kids because he notices that Naruto is there and he just feels the pressure coming off of Naruto and he knows deep down that if he says something he's going to get the absolute shit beaten out of him. So with that he decides he's not actually going to mention the fact that these are kids that are going to be guiding him. So they meet down by the gates and they're about to leave for their journey to guide the bridge builder. But, that's where I'm going to leave this part off, so I'll see you guys in the next part. Peace out, and I hope you guys had a good 4th of July, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, peace out, bye.